Hello my friends, welcome back to another video. It's been about a month since I've kind of released a video and I'm sorry I didn't post anything or let anybody know, but I have just had a lot going on with my university. They've kind of given me some problems over the last couple of months and I've just been so stressed that I've been kind of trying to figure out that, that I kind of didn't post anything. And I, I want to thank everybody that kind of sent me messages, checking to make sure I'm okay. And I'm, I'm happy to be back and give you all my reading plans for the month of April. It's crazy that we're already in the month of April. This year has already been flying by. And thankfully the semester has been flying by as well. And we're nearing the end. So towards these last couple of months of university, as we get closer to finals week, I'm going to be just overloaded with more stress. And the way to combat that is just by loading up my TBR with a ton of books. And we have several very thick books on this TBR. But similar to last month, I kind of structured it to where I will have uh, several books that I will for sure be picking up throughout the month of April, and then some maybe picks that if I get through all these other ones, which is very unlikely, but you know, I just always have to kind of slam more books into my TBR and hope that I get to them. So then there's a couple in the maybe section as well. I'll be starting some new series because I've been finishing up some but overall, I'm really excited for this month of reading, and I'm ready to get into some spring. And some of these picks kind of have some of those vibes with it. But I think without further ado, let's get into all the books that I will for sure be picking up in the month of April. <laughs> We're starting off with a big old thick book, and that is Caliban's War by James S.A. Corey, which is an author duo. And this is the second book in the Expanse book, and I've wanted to pick up the Expanse because it's kind of said to be a little bit of the a, a beginner's version of adult sci-fi, and I can totally agree with that. Like, there was a couple things in the first book that I was kind of confused with in the beginning, but as I kind of progressed further into the book, I kind of got immersed in just the, the aspects of just the sci-fi kind of opera that was going on in here, and I really... <laughs> really enjoyed the first book and I can't wait to continue on with this one. It almost had like a detective noir kind of perspective with Miller and then you kind of had like another perspective with Holden as he is kind of like a captain or kind of put into the captain's position and having to kind of stop a war from occurring. So there's just a lot of high stakes going on within the first book and it kind of the way that it ended kind of um, settled a little bit of the things but there's just a lot more kind of going on that's kind of, I'm, I believe is going to kind of show up in this book. And I'm really excited to see how these perspectives will like continue to go about their ways and just um, handle the things that kind of come towards them. The only thing I'm scared about is this is like a nine book series. So I'm very interested to see kind of what the umbrella plot will be. I have a feeling that it, what it's going to be, but I'm not for sure. And I'm very eager to see what route it will take in the second book. And this might be a little bit ambitious, but I'm planning on finishing this series. It is completed now, and I believe there's nine books. And I think there's nine months left in the year. So that means I gotta finish one of these books every month. So I think I think I can do it. If anybody else wants to join in on this kind of little journey that I'm embarking on, let me know in the comments below, but we'll see where this one goes. And next up for the Biblion Nuts kind of series read along, we just finished the Poppy War trilogy, and we are now going to be embarking on what I'm hoping for just another great series to kind of binge read over the next three months. And that's the David Bad trilogy by S.A. Chakraborty. And for the month of April, we'll be picking up The City of Brass. Now, I've heard about this everywhere, and I've been wanting to pick it up, I think, since I started BookTube, and even before then. But for some reason, I was kind of like just waiting. I don't know why. But then I believe last year on kind of like a little birthday kind of book haul, I picked this up. And I think it's time to finally dive into it. This is a favorite among many, and I have a feeling that this is going to be a favorite for me as well. It almost feels very whimsical and kind of like a kind of a fairy tale, as this con woman is basically kind of has to make a deal with the djinn and is transported to the city of David Bad, I believe. And then they have to kind of stop something from happening. But I'm hoping that this is just really immersive and kind of puts me into the streets of Cairo and then into this kind of magical city of the David Bad, the city of the brass, and kind of getting more of just what's going on. And just, I'm really excited for it. Like, this is something that I've been wanting to pick up forever. And if you want to join along, you can find the link to the Discord down below. I've also been making my way through the Skyward series by Brandon Sanderson. And it has come to that time where... I'm at the novellas, the three novellas that he kind of released, and I ordered the kind of bind-up collection of all three, 
and I'm, I'm waiting for them to arrive because I really want to dive into Cytonic. I really like where it kind of started. Um, Starshy kind of ended and where it kind of left off. It gave me more answers to kind of the questions that I was looking for in Skyward and I really want to pick up Cytotic. Like I have it on my bookshelf but I have heard that you really need to pick up the novellas before that. I really enjoyed how in kind of Starshy it kind of gave us a lot more and introduced kind of more characters. I honestly don't know who these kind of novellas follow but I really don't care. I really just want to dive into more of just the sky world world. I've loved everything about like Spence as a character and then them having kind of like these high stakes kind of survival to fight for humanity and just I feel like there wasn't as much high stakes in the second book and there's a kind of a little bit of a repeat of the first book but it kind of was I feel like a stepping stone for the whole quartet and I feel like after these kind of novellas in Cytonic I'm hoping that it kind of um begins to kind of wrap up and show you what's really going on. I've heard mixed feelings about Cytonic, but I don't know, I guess we'll find out when I get to it, but I'm really excited to binge all these novellas. I believe they're only about like 100 pages each, so I'm hoping to read all of them in the month of April. Next up, we have another very large book, and it is probably my most anticipated release for this year. The Shadow of the Gods was my best book of last year and I've been dying to get to The Hunger of the Gods. I pre-ordered it as soon as I saw the cover. These covers are all like outstanding. Like I feel like just the giant gods just chilling. Like we got a giant dragon in the first one, now we got a giant wolf. So I don't know what the third one is going to be but I can't wait to pick up The Hunger of the Gods. Like every morning I wake up and I just run to the door and look even though it's not there yet I I wait for it every morning and I think as soon as I get my hands on it I'm going to have to take a break from a lot of things except maybe Arcane. I've been loving that. But other than that, that's the only thing I will be planning on kind of consuming until I finish it. I really love kind of like the Viking inspired world and the aspects of kind of like the gods already being dead and they're just bones being kind of scattered around and they, the bones kind of have different powers and abilities. And then they also have the, the bloodlines from the gods that also have abilities as well. And you have just like a lot of fan, family and then the different perspectives. Like I feel like throughout the first book you really connect to just like the perspectives and you learn just a lot about them as they're putting kind of like these stakes and trying to find or save someone and just kind of you really connect with them. I really connect with them in the first book and I'm like... I don't know where it's going to go in the second book. Like I've heard very great things about the second book already from kind of like the beta readers. So I don't know. But I have a feeling that this is going to be just another top 10 book. I'm hoping that this doesn't have the middle book syndrome. I haven't read anything else by John Gwynn. So let me know if you have kind of opinions on his other works. I plan on picking up um, the, I can't remember what the, the series is called, but I believe the first book is called like um, Wrath with like the war with the giants, which Sounds pretty cool to me as well, like anything kind of talking about like giants in a war, I'm on board. So when that gets here, I'll be diving into that as well. And the last book that's <laughs> another pretty big book that was another most anticipated release is that I'm kind of ashamed that I haven't picked up yet. I've been kind of just like finishing up some other series before starting this one. And so it was a new release, I've kind of been just putting it on the back burner. But now that my kind of um, book TBR is kind of freed up a little bit, as far as kind of series go, <laughs> there's, there's not any much like um, room as far as kind of books on there, but hoping that I can finally pick up Engines of Empire by R.S. Ford. I've talked about this book a lot on my channel as soon as I kind of got my hands on a copy. Elliot Brooks kind of did a really great review on just like this first book and I have very similar reading taste to her so I'm expecting that I'll just enjoy this just as much as her and she did a really great review, I'll make sure to read the link to it. But it's kind of got airships and steampunk elements, a little bit of magic and then just all, you follow like a whole family um, and just seeing how they're kind of going on different paths to kind of prove themselves to their kind of family name and kind of being in a little bit of a pickle and having to kind of work their way out of it. And each of them kind of have different professions. Like you have a sorceress, a warrior, an artificer. So they all kind of have different walks of life and they're all kind of like thrown into just something that they weren't expecting and they're kind of having to deal with that as well as kind of a revolution kind of like rising. 
So like anything with like taking down like an empire or bringing bringing up in a revolution like I'm very interested by and I can't wait to finally pick this up. Like it has been on my TBR for several months now. And these last two books in the Forster category are going to be for a special vlog that I've been planning for a couple months now since I picked up these books. And it's gonna be focusing all on just Frederick Bachman. And I've got several of his books waiting on my shelves that I picked up for my used bookshore bookstore so that it's time to finally kind of just dive into more of his works i really loved anxious people and for some reason i just stopped there and once i found these copies i picked them up and the first two that i'll be picking up for that vlog is a man called ove and every morning the way home gets longer and longer so this one is a novella so i feel like i can do this mm -hmm. And then A Man Called Ove isn't very short, but I plan on picking this up and putting it all in just like a very specific kind of like author vlog. But based on how much I loved Anxious People, I feel like I love these just as much. And I won't spoil the other two books that I picked up from that vlog. You might have, I think I put it in kind of like a little book haul. So be on the lookout for that here pretty soon. Oh, the heater kicks on. I don't know, yesterday it was like 80 degrees, but now it is snowing. It's good old Colorado weather for you. And these last three books are the in the maybe category. I have a feeling that I'll pick these up whether in audiobook form or just kind of like picking them up after I get through all those other books. But ever since finishing like the second book, I've kind of been not so much wanting to pick up the next book like immediately like some of those other series. But then just out of nowhere, I was like, you know what? I need to read it. So it's going to be A Court of Wings and Ruin. I've heard that this is kind of like the best book out of the whole series. I really enjoyed the second book and kind of getting more of the night court, but I put in a hold for the audiobook for this, but I'm not sure if I want to do it that way. I feel like I always have the best experience with fantasy and stuff like that by reading. So I don't know, if you have an opinion, if you listen to the audiobooks and you really enjoy them, please let me know. But after finishing kind of like this series, I really want to check it out more by Sarah J. Mass, really go to Into the Throne of Glass, which I feel like will be more up my alley. Like I do enjoy this, but I feel like the Throne of the Glass might be kind of more of my reading tastes. But I mean, everybody loves this series. I see it everywhere on Book Talk and Bookstagram, and a lot of people have this on their favorites list. So we'll see where it goes. I hope to pick it up in the month of April. And I guess this next book is also for a reading vlog that I really want to do as well. And that is reading fantasy standalones. And I really want to do maybe like um, several different vol volumes of picking up like an, uh, a YA kind of standalone and then an adult fantasy standalone. And then maybe just doing two for one vlog. I don't know. If you have an opinion on that, please let me know. But for the first one, I plan on picking up Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I really want to check out all of her books, like An Enchantment of Ravens, and then she also had a new release called Vespertine, and all of them I've heard really great things about, and they almost have like a little bit of a whimsy, and that's just something that I always enjoy in books. I really love fairy tales and folk tales, so any kind of like those elements kind of put into like a little story, like I will just enjoy and consume all of it. I really don't have any idea what's kind of going on with that. All I know is it kind of involves a library, and on the back it says here, if you love the Hogwarts library, you'll be right at home at Summershaw. And I believe this kind of library houses kind of grimoires, and they all kind of house like a demon or something like that, and then like one escapes, and this one kind of main character has to go out and catch it. But that's about all I know about it, and if you've read it and you really enjoyed it, please let me know, because I think this might be first that I pick up on the maybe list. So I lied, there's actually four books on this maybe list. I decided um, just a couple seconds ago that, I decide, that I'm going to add another one. But the next hopeful pick that I really want to get to is this Woven Kingdom by Tahara Mafi. This was another kind of most anticipated release for me. The only thing I really know about this is it follows Persian mythology, which I haven't really read much about. Like I've always, like, I've read a lot about kind of other mythologies such as like Greek and stuff like that from like the Percy Jackson series, but I haven't read anything else kind of regarding any other mythologies and I'm really wanting to do more of that and kind of check out more because mythologies and folk tales, fairy tales, anything like that, any kind of whimsical stuff like that, I really enjoy and I've heard just great things about the author as well and this is going to be a new trilogy I believe. But I have no idea what's going on with this, but if you read this and you've enjoyed this, please let me know because I really want to get to it very soon. And the last book on this very large TBR is going to be A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. I think um, Reagan from Peru's Project recently picked this up and really enjoyed that. And I, when I watched her vlog, she talked about how much of kind of like a fairy tale like it felt like when she read it. 
and if you've been listening, you know, it's all I need in a book. But I believe this is Celtic inspired and it kind of follows a bard and kind of a little bit of an enemies to lovers or kind of rivals to lovers as this bard has to kind of return to his homeland. But I believe he has to kind of return to his homeland and kind of help his um, enemy from the past. And together they gotta kind of figure out why all these girls are kind of going missing. But just based on kind of what Reagan said in her vlog, like I'm really excited to pick this up really soon. But those were all the books I really hope to get to in this month. It's, got, it's a lot, I know. But lately I've been just picking up a lot more books trying to ease all my anxiety and stress. So that's what's going on. I think I can get through most of all those for sure books and dive into a couple of those maybe books. But that is gonna be all for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed. Please let me know your thoughts on any of these books as well as what kind of what books you plan on picking up any month of April. But it is time for Ellie to come on here. It's been a while since she's had a message for you but she has a very special one today. She first wishes you to have a splendid day, but she also says that adventure is out there. So I'll get you next time. Bye.